He delivers them out of Egypt. So it's through the commandments, really, that God is promoting an identity of love. That sounds, to some of us, probably you know, like a novel concept, the Ten Commandments being an expression of God's love. But one of the advantages that we have nowadays is we have the ability to sort of step back on these stories and look at them somewhat through a distance and also through the lens of Christ. And one of the things that we can recognize then is that God has the big picture in mind. Kind of like those rules that I had to follow in the military. Sometimes they seem really uh, stupid. <laughs> uh, but if I, as long as I had the, the big picture in mind, uh, then I realized that it wasn't just a list of do's and don'ts. So love sees the big picture. Because what if one day, all of a sudden, uh, when I'm in the, in the Navy and there's a fire on the boat? Now all of a sudden those, those rules and regulations probably seem to make a lot of sense. Because somebody really could die if they don't follow those rules. So forbidding certain things... And making certain rules is good. To take it a step further, actually, forbidding evil is good. I mean, just imagine if the government allowed us to, you know, drive down and just uh, uh, shoot people driving slow in the left lane. I mean, we just have this, it would just be mass chaos. I mean, we'd probably have no drivers left in Minnesota. So, knowing God's uh, knowing that God loved the Israelites before he gave them his word is a good start. Knowing that their obedience to these rules, uh, that, that it would give them life, well, that's like, that's like finding a $100 bill in a pair of old jeans. I mean, that's exciting stuff. So it's also true that God is promoting an identity of life. You know, statutes that don't come from the true God, like those of the Canaanite gods, for example, don't give true life. Obeying gods that are not real is, it's a, it's a bit like eating healthy brownies. You know, if there's anything for me uh, that gives life, I tell you what, eating a good brownie makes me feel really alive. And... Once in a while, my, my wife likes to trick me, and she substitutes these no sugar, no gluten, no nothing brownies, these fake brownies, and I don't care what they say, there's no life in that. But fortunately, we're serving a God that's got all the good ingredients inside. And he's letting us in on it, and he's letting us in on this free life. Sure, we, we have a few stipulations, but they're meant for our good. Because everybody knows that boundaries preserve life. Just ask a farmer. Hey, you can have horses and cows and pigs, and if they're just running around everywhere, well, they're very likely to run into the road and get hit by a car or a truck or something. So to preserve their life, we have to set up some boundaries. So when we consider the abundant life that the Jews will receive when they obey God, uh, God and His Word, it's easy to get a picture of a certain kind of godly aura that would be on, uh, on display for the surrounding people. If we look again at the Ten Commandments, we just might recognize the hope that is lit with a, a bright lamp like a display at Macy's. So finally, it's true that God is promoting an identity of hope. And hope is, is tied to remembering in our story of Moses. It isn't just blind faith. They don't, you know, they don't just uh, uh, blindly uh, run out there uh, trying to have faith and hope. They have a reason for their hope. God has done some things in their life. You know, God is, is, is kind of like a... a, a a really good firewoman who comes to the rescue. And if this firewoman ha has come to the rescue a couple of times, and, and then another time, and then another, 
Well, the chances are that if I get myself in a tight spot again, I'm probably going to have a lot of hope that this firewoman is going to come along and save me. Because she's done it so many times before. Now, we don't take for granted that the firewoman is going to be there to save us. We don't tempt. But, if we do find ourselves in a tense situation, we can always do what Moses is doing. Which is looking back on the past works and words of God, past failures of the people, and imploring, imploring the people to obey God so that they can have life and so that they can be a light to the people around them. So we all have a choice today. We have a choice to continue thinking about, for some of us anyways, to continue thinking about the Ten Commandments as this list of rules, feeling guilty, going to get punished, struck by lightning, whatever. Or we can see the Ten Commandments as a start to our holy identity that God is calling us to. Now, these are obviously only some of the ways to be holy and like God. But they are a start. So, in addition to the commandments, we have, of course, uh, eventually, the ultimate sacrifice that's made by Christ, which allows us to see new ways to be different in the world. And new ways to, to stand out from the crowd, and uh, to stand out from the world to be that uh, uh, pineapple in the bucket of worms. So rather than taking on an identity of, of sort of righteous law abiders, which really isn't true anyways, what I'm suggesting is that we take on an identity of love, life, and hope, so that others may approach us and ask, what is it about you that makes you so different? So if you're in a place today where you know God, then I want to just encourage you this week. Take 20 to 30 minutes and just sort of reflect on yourself and ask yourself, in what ways am I blending in with the rest of the world? And in what ways is my identity truly linked with Christ? So maybe it's uh, the way that I view money or sex, or popularity, or power? How does the world do it, and how do I do it, so that I can be a light to them? And if you're in a place uh, where, where right now you're not in a covenant with God, then I encourage you to, sometime this week to consider asking someone who is in a covenant with God why they are. How did you start on this journey? Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for this message of, of a holy identity. Help us to, this week and, and for the rest of our lives, to be different and have different values and to shy away from the, the evil uh, behaviors of the world in order that we might win the world to Christ. In Jesus' name.